Well, in terms of width, the front door and rear door are comparable. There's quite a wide aperture here of opening as well. And the front seats are set for six foot driver and passenger. And there's quite a lot of legroom there, comparable, in my view, to a Skoda Superb Estate. So we'll try to find out now how many else we can fit in comfortably. quite cosy in here, but our shoulders are nudging each other and our heads actually touching the side. But we've got curtain airbags. Now this PSA Peugeot engine has been shoehorned in as you can see. They aren't the most simple to work on. Quite complex here. Here's a common rail, your diesel pipes and your four injectors. Engines mounted directly over the front axle and that accounts for the better turn that you get on bends. For first year's taxation in the UK this will cost £155 the tax. Car emits 150 grams per kilometre of CO2 and that's only one more than the 2 litre HDI and only six more than the 1.6 petrol so that's quite an achievement. Now the 508 is built in France and it's also built, believe it or not, in China for an enlarging car market there. In terms of build quality, I haven't spotted any flaws, it's got the solidity of a German car. The only issue I've found is with this plastic bumper that seems to have warped, so it's not quite flush with the rest of the back wing here. Now ergonomically speaking, everything is to hand. Although there are so many switches going on that Peugeot have actually had to conceal in this area here for the head-up display that pops out. The stalk conceals these three switches here. Now cars are getting more complex day by day, but do we really need an electromagnetic handbrake when it takes time to actually engage? Getting 204 brake horsepower from a 2.2 turbo diesel is an achievement. And this engine has got similar performance to the old 2.7 V6 diesel that used to be in the XJ. Nice right hand bend here and turning is very sharp for a car of this size. In terms of MPG, the car was brimmed and it showed 600 miles and that's with a 72 litre tank. We've covered just over 250 miles and that's used a quarter of a tank. Therefore, theoretically speaking, 1,000 miles possibly, potential fuel range, but we'll see how that goes as we continue on our travels. So for about a thousand pounds more, you could buy a 2.7 diesel a4 Audi Estate that actually has less brake horsepower than this 2.2 508. Of course you won't get as many of the gizmos that you've got in here. I think mid-range 508 would compete more with the Vauxhall Insignia. Now they're quite similar in terms of dimension but I think the Standing feature with the 508 diesel is the greater brake horsepower. Peugeot have done themselves a disservice by not offering a manual option with this engine size. I mean, that would reduce the price. And in terms of performance and economy, it is very good. Drivability, very good. Load carrying. Practicalities? No. I mean, what do you think, Pete, about it? Well, for me, it's not practical enough as an estate. Mm. I mean, bearing in mind, you drive an estate, don't you? Yeah. It's reduced size at the back. I can imagine you wouldn't be able to get lots of things in that you would 
to me it's more like a, a, a bigger hatchback. People like this estate look, maybe. Well, the estate look is a lower roof line with, yeah. with less glass area. There's more, it's, I mean, this diesel engine, which is, you know, maybe 800 miles potential maximum range, are we talking a, a long distance car? In my view of Peugeot, certainly with this 508, it's changed because it seems to have addressed the balance more between engineering and electronic gizmos. This car is better engineered than previous Peugeots that I've driven.